What's up, Hyperfast Nation? Welcome to this episode of the show where I sat down with the owner of a luxury brokerage. And this lady, by the way, has an amazing story. She talked about how she went from a small town to selling high-end real estate in one of the best luxury markets in the world. Welcome to the show, Megan Romine. Welcome to the show today, Megan. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Dan. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. Uh, you have an amazing story of, you know, I'll, I'll let you tell it, but it was just of how you made the transition from a small town down to South Florida. So why don't you go ahead and tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about your background and, and how you ended up, you know, operating luxury real estate in what, I think recently they said South Florida is going to be like the number one or two luxury market in the world for, for luxury real estate. So tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you made that transition. Yeah, so I definitely did not start out selling high-end real estate. I'm originally from West Virginia. I grew up in a small town. There's not a stoplight in the entire county. I love the sense of community that I had growing up and growing up that way in West Virginia. And I've really brought a lot of those values with me to South Florida. Um, also, the work ethic that was instilled within me, you know, from growing up in West Virginia. And from a young age, I always knew that I wanted to be in real estate. I started off in corporate real estate for about seven years. I moved to South Florida. I had actually never been to South Florida before. Um, but I had this, this dream. I wanted to sell high-end real estate. I moved to South Florida to work for a developer at that time. And slowly over the years, actually, um, something interesting that a lot of people don't know, um, when I first got into real estate on my own, it actually took me over a year to sell my first house. You know, we were in different market conditions. And you always have to start from somewhere. So I started off doing rentals and working all the time, every single weekend, always available, and really had great mentorship and really built on that over the years and then opened luxury real estate, a boutique brokerage that focuses on high-end real estate and also building portfolios for investors. And ever since then, you know, it's just been such a great transition. And now I'm able to help others um, with their real estate goals, which is what I really enjoy. What have you focused on more the last few years, the luxury side or the investor side? Because both of those areas have done pretty well in South Florida the last few years. You know, it's interesting, and I know that you probably get this all of the time, but we, uh, my main focus is high-end real estate, a large portion of that is the waterfront real estate in South Florida. And a lot of these individuals, you know, they build their wealth through real estate as well. Even if it's not their main business, um, a lot of them are interested in building their portfolios. So it actually happened as like a domino effect, uh, focusing on high-end luxury real estate. You know, ultimately a lot of my clients um, by second nature are in the real estate industry. And I started off by mentoring with large groups of investors. What type of investors are you, are you mostly focused on is, you know, down here in Florida? Is it f people doing flips, people doing short-term rentals? Like, tell, us a little, tell us a little bit more about that. So the investors that I mainly started out with, they flip houses. So they purchase homes um, from auction um, every week blindly and they mm. typically fix them and flip them. So that's how I really started to learn the ins and outs of real estate, um, which has helped me ultimately be where I am at today. Um, we do, that's a, most of the investors. We do have investors that do the short-term rentals. Also, um, investors that are trying to diversify their portfolios or they own the waterfront real estate and they're not here all the time. So they Airbnb or VRBO the properties. So I just say it's a good mix, um, mostly fix and flips, um, but there's definitely some that are interested in the short-term rentals. What do you think is important for real estate agents to know and focus on if they, 
if they want to start doing more investor deals or get investor clients, like what would you tell an agent that wants to do that, but hasn't done it yet? I think the best thing that you can do is get as diversified as possible and learn as much as possible. Because most of the time when you're working with these investors, they're very, very well versed in real estate. So they're going to want to work with an agent that knows what's going on, what's going on in their markets. And actually, interestingly enough, a lot of uh, my larger sales are actually investors that are agents themselves and brokers themselves, but they understand the importance of being hyper-focused in a certain market, and that's why they allow me to list their homes. So I think really focusing on particular areas, uh, particular real estate, um, that is one dynamic. And then also just diving in and learning as much as you can. You know, in my free time, I wasn't, you know, watching TV. I was reading books, looking on the MLS, reading all the articles that I can, really just trying to get all the knowledge uh, that I can to be able to better assist my clients. Yeah, I, I love how, uh, you know, you had that curiosity to go out and learn what do you think are the best sources for people today that that you know have that desire, have that discipline, want to learn? How do how do they make sure they're getting the right information? Because there's so much of it out there. So what would you what would you say about you know how to find the right information? I think there's a fine line between absorbing a lot of information and then actually going out and doing, right? So I, I think that I, I see like opposite ends of the spectrum sometimes where you can absorb all of this information, but if you're not actually going out and doing something with that information, um, I think that that is a really mm. integral, integral part of it. Um, so going out and being in the field and finding, if you can find a great mentor, that is what really helped and shaped my career. So, you know, being okay with working the deals and let's say you get, you know, a smaller portion of the commission or whatever the case may be, essentially look at it as paid training. So a lot of the times I, I see agents or newer agents and they're like, oh, I, I don't want to do that or, you know, I'm not willing to, you know, work a part of a deal. Um, but at the end of the day, like, that's how I learned. I mean, I sold a condo once and after the commission split, half of a half of a half, it was such a low <laughs> price range. I'm not joking. I think I made $200. And like, you know, there's some agents out there that would never do that. But for me, that was paid training. And right. that's how I like dug through the trin trenches and really learned. No, when you're starting out, I definitely think that having one or two mentors on a deal that you obviously pay through, through the commission makes a lot of sense. I mean, even if you do your first deal for free, which I know sounds crazy, but uh, you're going to get that, you know, if, if you're with the right person, at least, or the right people, you're going to get way more value than that, you know, in the learning. And it's, you're going to get a 10x, you know, return on investment of that someday. Absolutely. And I feel that that's the mark that some um, agents can miss. Um, you really got to dive in there and there's no shortcuts to success. So can, staying consistent and not being married to any particular outcome. So if you're doing the work and you're, you're doing what you've seen has worked in the past or what your mentor is saying that's working, well, if it, you don't see the results that you want right away, you got to keep going. So don't get married to the result, get married to the habit and being consistent with what you're doing. And ultimately in the long run, um, you can't go wrong with that. What was it like that first year? You said it took a, a year to sell yeah. your first house. Um, what was that like financially, mentally, emotionally? How did you, how did you push through? I was just so determined and I believe that you know, whenever I left corporate real estate, there were some people, even the people that were closest to me that were like, ah, oh, you know, it's very difficult to make it in, in real estate. And I can't believe, you know, you're leaving your, your great job, um, that you, it has a lot of security. Um, but I was just so determined. So I had changed my whole life, whole lifestyle. I had a great, a beautiful, brand new apartment downtown. I moved out of that. I moved with a roommate and I was like, I want to do this real estate 
um, you know, as a career. And I think one of the most important things is I always made myself available. So on the weekends, what I found is because I was just doing a lot of rentals, so hiring rentals, um, just doing a, as many rentals as I possibly could, a minimum of at least 10 to 15 a month. And what I found is that on the weekends, most of the agents and most people go out and make plans, well, I'd be sitting around waiting for my phone to mm. ring. So no one would be answering their phone and I'd be like, yep, I can show you, I can meet you in an hour. And that's how I picked up a lot of clients. And then, you know, obviously the rentals turn into sales and it wasn't easy, but I definitely made lifestyle changes. And I've always been very careful about as my business has grown over the years to still live well within my means, under my means, actually. I think that that's really important and that you're putting money back into your business. So any money that I had made, I was putting back into my business. And I think that's a really important aspect for agents. I agree, especially, you know, I, th I think the ones who entered... <laughs> In the last couple of years uh, probably saw a bigger increase in the opportunities and jump in income and you know if, if you didn't have that discipline that you talked about then like any sort of slowdown in number of deals um, could, could be harmful personally and to your business. And it's very difficult for agents that have just entered the market over the last two to three years. And now we're starting to see some market adjustments, some market shifts. Obviously, it's dependent upon what type of real estate you're selling, what, air, what location you're in. But, you know, the agents aren't acclimated or aren't used to things happening right away. And I see it as such a great opportunity as an agent because the best agents will always stick out. So I, I see this time as really an opportunity to be the go-to for your clients, to be the knowledge base for your clients, and your clients know that you're gonna work harder than anyone else to help them reach their real estate goals. When did you start to, uh, when did you make the transition from solo agent to uh, you know, starting to hire people and build out a team? Mm. Um, Relatively, I was in around year two, maybe even a year and a half. So not that long after I started selling my first house, I realized the power of having a team, but I always wanted to help other people. So from having a team, it was really the idea of we're stronger together. And I just knew if, if I could help one person, the way that real estate helped me and helped my life, and I love it so much, if I could just help make that difference for one person, um, it was worth it to me. So I started um, having a team um, relatively quick early on, um, but I'm definitely more stringent um, now, and how I run my brokerage is it's a, a small team. Um, typically, and you know this, when you have a brokerage that has over 100 agents, you, know, you probably have about 10 producers, um, so maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so um, I've learned over the years really where to expend my energy and I, you know, I, I encourage agents to maybe go to other brokerages first um, before, you know, signing up with my brokerage luxury real estate. And, you know, one thing that I have is like with my listings and the multi-million dollar range, you know, you're not going to have an agent that hasn't worked on a multi-million dollar deal before. Um, whenever you're working with this team. Um, so I've, I've moved things around over the years and figured out how to shape it to best assist my clients while also helping our agents succeed in their business as well. Did you start off um, at your, you know, with, your, with your own brokerage from the beginning or did you, were you somewhere else first? No, so I actually started off um, with a small brokerage and very early on I started off with my mentor. And as I, I grew and my mentor was in a different city than I was, so I decided to go with a more local brokerage for a while. And then I started to, started to really realize that you know, a lot of people are working with me not because of the name of the brokerage, but because they want to work with me. Um, so I went back to my business partner. We'd always stayed in touch. And my mentor is now my business partner. And I went back to him and I'm like, hey, this is what I envision. Um, would you like to help me with this? And 
now we're in business together. So that was about a couple years ago. So I went through growing pains just like any agent does, um, switching different brokerages, trying to figure out what's the best fit. And also what was really important for me is trying these different brokerages um, I really figured out what was working and what wasn't working. And ultimately at the end of the day, it's not the brokerage, it's the agent. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. The, the lead generation, the marketing, the conversion, all of that typically happens at the agent level or, or the team level. Um, you know, in your case, you're, I mean, you're really like a team that just happens to be operating at your own brokerage. It sounds yes. like, yes. um, What's what's the structure of the team like today and and uh, talk a little bit about your growth plans for the team as well. So how we have our team structured is that our agents work as single agents, but we're still cohesive in being a team. So we help each other with marketing. Uh, we help with listings, with showings. And I consider myself, you know, because I'm a producing agent um, as being an owner as well. So I always tell my agents, I'm like the air traffic controller. So <laughs> you come to me and then we're going to work, whether it's with the attorney or anyone that we need to talk to. We're going to figure out how to get the job done. Um, so that's really how I, I classify um, myself um, in that aspect. But as far as the team and growth, um, you know, I've just been very careful about which agents to move into the team dynamic because we do have such a small team and I really, with my brokerage and our brand is really, you know, being a step above and being known to be a step above. So you have to like hold agents accountable. Right. Um, that's why I like such a small group. Um, but now what I, I am looking at adding on a few more potential agents, but I like the feel of the smaller brokerage um, to be able to manage and understand what's going on with the agents and to really keep those, um, those standards pretty high. So you're, you're basically what I hear you saying is you're, you're going to continue growth, but in a, in a smart way, not, not growth for growth sakes. It's, it's got to make sense from a profit standpoint, culture standpoint, and uh, just their ability to, to serve your clients at the level that you expect. Absolutely. Most importantly is being able to service our, our clients at the expectations that we have for our team. Um, and certainly we have all of the visibility and a list globally, um, just like the other larger brokerages can as well. Um, but yes, that is the trajectory. And also too, you know, we're in the higher price points. I mean, certainly we help with portfolio and do the investment properties. Um, but mainly what we do is higher price points. And, you know, there's not, you're not doing selling two house, 200 houses a year, you know, as a top agent in the higher price points, you're selling 25 houses a year, 30 houses a year. Um, so everything that we do is very focused. What do you, I guess, who's your ideal agent that you hire typically? Are they new? Are they experienced? Great question. Um, we typically don't take on new agents that need the training with the contracts um, and some of that really the, the beginning stages. Um, we do have a sister brokerage that is much larger, over 100 agents. And if someone is interested in joining our team, they do have the option to start off with that brokerage, um, get the training that they really need, because I think it has to be a win-win situation. Um, so um, most of our agents are already, you know, already have that experience. And also too, what I look for is really having the right mindset about how they want to help their clients, where they want to take their business. Um, and if they are not, not green, but they're earlier on in their career, um, just understanding that, you know, it takes a lot of hard work. Um, you know, agents aren't just like handed multi-million dollar leads right off the bat, if, you know, being like a fairly newer agent, like it takes time and we have to build a certain amount of trust. Um, so we know, we know that our clients are taken care of to the best of our abilities. Tell us a little bit about the Mermaid Realtor brand and, and what 
that is all about. <laughs> So moving from West Virginia, you know, I grew up hunting, fishing, being in the outdoors. So when I drove down to South Florida um, with my dog and I got out of my little Kia at the time and it was very flat here, um, the <laughs> landscape. And I was like, oh my goodness, what did I do? Um, and shortly after that, I got into diving and spear fishing and fishing and I just fell in love with the ocean. And I was like, wow, I really wanna share this with other people. Um, so that's how the idea Mermaid Realtor came up. It was really to share my love of the ocean with others and by by nature, I ended up, you know, waterfront properties and attracting those like minded clients. What do you do when you're not selling real estate or working, you know, with the team uh, just to kind of keep your work life balance or, or, or sanity? <laughs> well, I mean, I am I am not a big believer in this thing that they call balance. Yeah. Um, I feel that when you're really working on a big goal or a big dream, I mean, your life is going to be out of balance. Um, certainly like self care and taking care of yourself um, physically and emotionally, all of that is important. Um, I do my, my self care routine. Um, you know, I do my, my workouts, getting a lot of sun, getting sunlight, cryotherapy, um, vitamin shots. I try to take care of myself the best that I can so I can help other people. Um, if I do need a little bit of a reset, um, I go to the Bahamas um, mm. fairly often. I'd say once every couple months for a quick, quick weekend trip. You can take the seaplane, it takes about 20 minutes. And what I love about that is if something major comes up with work, well, I just jump on the plane and come right back to South Florida. So that's definitely my, my getaway. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll definitely see a lot of pictures in the Bahamas. Awesome. Where, where do you think the real estate market is going in the next uh, year or so? Great question. And that's the question that everyone's asking, <laughs> right? Um, I think that, you know, we understand that the market's shifting. Um, it really depends on your price point and what type of property that you're looking at. Um, everything is, is working towards adjustments, though. So uh, mid-range, um, obviously, I think that you're going to see a, a decline in the pricing, um, especially over quarter three and quarter four of this year. Um, I think that, you know, with the interest rates, uh, we're not seeing the as high with the interest rates they're kind of evening out i think over the next year or so you know we may come back down to around the five percent maybe four and a half percent um we're evening into more of a buyer's market slowly um however you have certain types of markets such as waterfront in south florida and if you have a unique waterfront property and it is move-in ready um, you're still seeing these properties sell um, at premium prices in quick amounts of time. But I think the most important thing as an agent is that listing and pricing accurately and giving sellers these realistic expectations. We're not in the same market that we were and really figuring out who is your buyer and how are you mm. gonna get in front of that buyer? We are no longer in the days of placing a property on the MLS and waiting for phone calls to come in and you know, selling the property in, in two days. Um, but the question about the market, it's really what area are you in, what price range, what type of property, anything that's affected with interest rates, um, you're gonna see significant, um, you know, decreases in price. Um, waterfront, you know, most of these properties in South Florida, these are not financed buyers. Um, so they are uh, protected a, a little bit more in that aspect. Um, and there's still low inventory for waterfront as well. Well, I, yeah, I, I certainly think it's going to be, yeah, different depending on the area and the markets, like you said, and that, you know, sales skills and marketing skills are going to, are going to be a lot more important than they were a year or two ago. So a hundred percent. What I can say is for agents right now is that, and you should, this should always be the mindset you have to work and you have to work hard. And now more than ever, you know, you're gonna be working even more hours, especially agents that are used to the last couple years. 
you're gonna be working much later hours, you're gonna be working much harder to keep deals together, and it's really focusing on your professionalism, your marketing, and your experience, or your mentor's experience, um, to be able to hold these deals together and get them to the finish line. Yeah, I certainly agree. Well, it's been an honor to have you on the show and to hear your story and all the cool things you do. Before we wrap up, I always like to end with a hyper fast round if you're ready for a couple rapid fire questions to end Ooh. here. All right, let's do it. <laughs> right. What's your biggest piece of advice to a new real estate agent? Consistency, consistency mm. and never give up. I know you said one, but two. All right, what's the biggest mistake you see veteran real estate agents making? Getting too comfortable. What's one thing you're doing in your business now that you weren't doing a year ago? Um, that I wasn't doing a year ago. Mm, I can't think of anything right off the bat. I've stayed pretty consistent um, with, oh, one thing I can say is talking to other more potential agents about joining the brokerage, whereas last year wasn't really a conversation. Mm. All right, last one. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Five years from now, I see myself selling waterfront real estate and helping other agents um, and my clients reach their real estate goals. All right, well, thank you so much for being on the show today, Megan. Uh, really appreciate it. If people want to get in touch with you or learn more about you, what are the best ways for them to connect? Yes, best way, you can find me on Instagram at Mermaid Realtor, um, or you can also um, send me an email, megan at mermaidrealtor.com, website, mermaidrealtor.com, <laughs> or our brokerage website is luxury, and that's a luxury with an E, realestate.com. All right, well, thank you for being on the show today, Megan. To all of our listeners and viewers, thank you for tuning in. Please leave us some feedback, share this episode with other real estate agents that you think would benefit from these amazing lessons, and we'll see you next time. All right, thanks, Dan.